This is a short one like me. Dudes with Bruges on a Porch presents Michael Bruges. Dude. Craft Bruges and Casual Conversations joined with us to talk about his new movie, The Novice. We have Jonathan Cherry. Jonathan, thanks so much for uh, for hanging out. Yeah, thanks for having me. You got this new flick, uh, The Novice. I watched the trailer of it, and it uh, it looks uh, it looks incredible. It's kind of been circulating around the film festival. So, um, kind of what's 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 that been like going into different uh, festivals, uh, watching the movie with different crowds? Have you has it been received well so far? Yeah, it's been um, interesting because we shot it uh, before COVID, right okay. before COVID. Um, we literally ended. In December, everyone went away for break, and then we came back. You know, the movies probably being put together, and then boom, everything shut down. And two years later, almost two years later, we're we're seeing it at Tribeca, which was like you're so removed from it. Mm -hmm. You know, I almost forgot certain things, certain scenes that I shot, uh, and seeing them react at Tribeca, I had no expectations, honestly, none. And seeing that reaction was was, was really cool. Awesome. It's a small movie. Is it like getting all this this hype? It's a tiny movie, you know. Yeah, I and mean, a lot of times, like the best movies, some of the best movies I've seen, it's just kind of like those those I guess you could say smaller movies, independent films, and it's like uh, you can tell there is a lot of heart. There's a lot of soul in it, uh, and I'm not saying like all these blockbusters don't have that, they but do. but uh, you know, like you can really see the passion behind a lot of them, and I, I think. Just from watching the trailer, I can see it in, in this film too. So it's about uh, it's about rowing. It's about a person who joins a, a rowing team and kind of gets this obsession about it, uh, which is yeah. which is pretty crazy. So yeah, give us some more details about it. So yeah, so it's it's like um, what the director who it's it's loosely her story. Hmm. I I don't have the full. I know she was a, a rower. Um, I know she's queer. I don't know if that it happened in college. I'm not sure, I, but I, I do. I'm pretty sure it's semi autobiographical. Okay. Uh, and it, but it, it, what she says is it's uh, Lauren Hathaway. She says it's a movie about. It's not a rowing movie. It's a movie with rowing in it. Sure. Basically, um, I think the rowing is just like the setting, set the stage. It's yeah. about rowing, but it's really about obsession and drive and mental health. And uh, and overwhelming circumstances, you know. Mm -hmm. So as a as an actor, can you relate to or uh, like uh, an obsession of type? Uh, is that something that you've done even with like sports or or anything like that? A hobby that you've kind of gotten an obsession with? Sports wise, definitely the NBA. Yeah, obsessive Milwaukee NBA. Bucks. Yeah. What do you got on there? I can't see Milwaukee it. Bucks. There you go. Oh, oh are you in Milwaukee? Um, Wisconsin. Yeah, I'm in Wisconsin. Wisconsin. I came to uh, when the Ra I'm from Toronto. Okay. When the Raptors game one of the Raptors Bucks, mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, a bunch of us flew down for game one because we we had just beaten the Sixers with that crazy Kawhi shot. We were all you know nuts. Yeah. But we flew down to Milwaukee for the game. It's a good and place. Let me tell you, because you know that everyone says Canadians are so nice or whatever. Right. The Wisconsin people are like Canadians. <laughs> I felt like I was because I was talking mad shit, you yeah. know, the whole time. You got and, it. But it turned like, I mean, there was one real threatening looking dude uh, who told me to like sit down. <laughs> <laughs> but after the game, like all these people, they were coming up to me from Milwaukee. You guys won that first game. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, they were really sweet, man. It was it was like good hearted, you know. Oh yeah, trash talk. Was, uh, but it's, it's was that was that uh, at Pfizer? Was that in like the Deer District with all the yeah. stuff around? Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. That yeah. place is awesome. I love it. So cool, beautiful stadium. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely, pretty great. But yeah, the NBA, and I'd say probably like to be honest, this is my uh, act, my career. Mm -hmm. You know? Yeah, yeah. It, I mean, it's pretty like when if your job is also your biggest hobby, which is movies and mm -hmm. television, and you know. Um. Yeah. Yeah. So as uh, you you play the coach in the movie, um, is yeah. that something that you've had experience with before, or is it kind of like kind of how did your how did you take or how did you approach this role? Did you research? So it? I um I've been I, I mean I I've been working I've been at it for a long time, mm. um, and I had I had moved back from I was in that living in L.A. I moved back from L.A. to Canada, uh, to Toronto, 
and I took a break for the first time in like 15 years. Oh. I'd never taken a break. I'd been going strong, you know, chasing, chasing the whole time. I said, you know what? I had to like, I had to like chill for mm-hmm. a minute. You know, I, I uh, was able to do that. And then in that time, I took a job teaching for the first, like, for the first time in my life. You know, I'm like a bit of a side. I never had a side job. It was always just acting. Mm-hmm. So I started teaching at Toronto Film School. And then this role came about uh, as a coach, college coach for the young, you know, they were the, 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 the girls in the movie, the same age as my students. So it was like an interesting thing to come back with, with this new, you know, skill that I've taken up this, you know, to, a, to apply it to this, to this movie. It sort of, it sort of really meshed with my life. Awesome. Um, sports movies. I've done a, I did a couple of hockey movies. Um, uh, I, uh, Goon. Goon, you see the Goon movies? Yeah, I have. Yeah. So I guess that, you mm-hmm. know, in terms of sports movies, but it's nothing like this. Yeah, that's pretty crazy. So, uh, as far as like, do you still do the teaching stuff? Or are you still, or is that kind I'm of? I'm still like, doing it. Like I, you know, if, if I have a job that term, um, like I've had to like take terms off cause I've mm-hmm. had a, a movie or something, but if I'm not, yeah, if I'm not working, I'm teaching. I, I like awesome. it. Yeah. I'm a full-time teacher as well. Uh, not, right on. not acting, but uh high school yeah. level special education. And it's, uh, it's fun working with other people and kind of, you know, being that person that they can rely on and and mm-hmm. you can show them different ways of approaching things and it's uh i i really love it it's it's oh, a, that's awesome, a great job yeah what do you teach special education um i um primarily teach math classes though too so i support math classes and work with kids with uh various types of disability and it's uh it's great i love it cool man that's awesome yeah so rewarding, uh, right it's yeah, rewarding. Well, it sure is it sure is and it's uh you know i think teachers need to get a little more uh praise mm-hmm. every once in a while but uh um how did you get into acting overall is it something you've always wanted to do it's something i always uh wanted to do it is something i was never growing up in the suburbs of toronto uh there's one kid who was an actor maybe two you know mm-hmm. um and they were just these super adorable kids who would do commercial you know like they would sure. like call Culkin or whatever and just like, that's not me that's not my life <laughs> uh I always wanted to do it. And then I went to university and I just thought, I'm not, I don't relate to these people, these, these kids, these rich guys, girls who want to be in business or doctors, lawyers. Like, I just don't, I I just, I I can't get into that. You know, and I just had a two week depression and made a choice. I said, dude, you got to like figure out yourself. You got to figure out what do you want to do? It's not, basketball mm-hmm. it's not you know going to be a professional gigolo <laughs> so what else do you love and it was you know obviously it's always been movies and uh i took some drama in high school never any plays or anything but i always thrived at that and uh i felt like i could always uh carry a room kind of thing yeah you know i could hold court and i feel like i just felt like i was an entertaining guy you know yeah and I, uh, it's kind of a cool story if you want to hear it. Yeah. Um, I have a real close group of friends where we would go to school, you know, and then also all a bunch of us the same summer camp, right? Every summer we'd go away to this camp. So I grew up with these guys, always a real tight crew. We were super, we were into fish and the Grateful Dead sure. and you know, all that stuff and uh, movies. But the idea of like being an actor was like, come on, like, you know, mm-hmm. this is not anywhere near any of us, any of us. Um, and then a bunch of us went to the same university at Western in London, Ontario. And um, after I'd made that choice, I had heard about a couple of friends who, uh, of this Vancouver film school. And I went home for Christmas. My, my family lives in Florida and I told them I'm dropping out and I'm going to go do that. I got, like, that's what I got to do. I'm going to, I'm going to uh, apply to the school. If I get in, I'm going to go. And I got it. Anyway, I'll come back to school. I asked my I, my best friend call each other sort of at the same time and say, dude, you know, I gotta you gotta go for dinner. I gotta tell you something because he was at the school too. We were, um, you know, in the same circle, mm-hmm. and we went to this, this dinner, and we both told each other the exact same thing, not knowing that the other guy wanted to do it, like, he, and the same school. Nice. We both applied over Christmas, not telling anybody, to the same school. 
not knowing that the other guy even knew about that school. Mm-hmm. And then, which was kind of crazy. And then that that fall, we we both got in and we drove out to Vancouver from Toronto to try nice. to go be actors. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. It's good to have that uh, that support system too, you know, like uh, and it just seems like it was meant to be kind of your, uh, your, your feel good story. Your buddy uh, applied, got in and you were in it together. So that's, that's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks. But yeah, it's pretty, it's pretty crazy. Yeah, absolutely. And then what, what you've said uh, a little bit before, so you've done some, some drama. You, you also were a part of a, I would say a big movie franchise from my youth, Final Destination. Yeah. Um, so the second one, of course, I can't look at a a truck pulling wood without uh, without thinking about that opening seed. Uh, what what's that like? You know, kind of drama versus horror. I feel like there's some aspects of both of those genres that kind of blend together. Horror, obviously, a little more a little different, but I think you gotta maybe pull some things from both sides. My approach is different. Okay. Um, I always like to bring comedy to everything. Yeah. Um, and in that movie was the first time I was like. I was funny, I guess. Well, I was, I mean, I made, I made people laugh in the movie, but mm-hmm. I was being funny in something that I, you were, I guess you weren't supposed to be funny in, um, realizing that there's no rule, you know? Right. And I always, I realized at that point, like, I like to bring, because I started to do like a lot of comedy after that. I like to bring a certain levity to, to things in life and in these situations, you know, like when people are scared, they laugh and mm-hmm. people are, or, like break out of their uh, guarded persona. And that's usually funny. It could still be scary if it's funny. Right. You know? So more than bringing the drama, I would say it's always a bit of comedy. Nice. Whereas also the novice, like what well, that's a really intense movie. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's my character's job to bring some levity to the person um, and to try to uh, sort of, slow the, 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 the train down mm-hmm. with some sensitivity and some humor and some love or whatever. Uh, yeah. As opposed to endless drama, fuel the drama to make it happen faster, you know? Yeah. Because otherwise, you know, when you're watching these, uh, dramatic movies, you're just gonna, you're gonna leave the movie. If you don't have those kind of those, the comic relief or whatever to ease the tension and to help not only build characters, but drive the story and everything. Cause that's just like what uh, real life is like too. Not everything is dramatic, 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 dramatic. You're going to leave the movie, um, you know, likely having a heart attack or just feeling like <laughs> just really yeah. stressed out afterwards rather yeah, than, yeah. than uh, being like, Oh, what a, what an amazing film. So it's, it's good that you do that, which, which yeah. is awesome. Um, yeah. it's so good to make people laugh. feels good. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and then is that kind of, were you giving um, like freedom to, kind of try out different uh, approaches in, in the movie being an independent film is it kind of we got to be here here and here or is there was a room for like improv well, or so this like was that? it was a tough shoot um it, it being uh very much um i mean it's like a pretty big supporting role but it being very much the isabel mm-hmm. story um and she, you know, she, her and Lauren, the director side by side, drive the whole thing. And we're all just trying to grab on to slow it down. I, whenever they got to me, there wasn't really that much time. Okay. Um, but Lauren wrote it. I believe she sort of knew this coach Pete character in her other life, yeah. in her real life, or a guy like that. Who's a bit of a patriarch to these girls. And, you know, um, she very much was trying to get away from any type of like, idea that which the trailer sort of makes it look like that like they might be hooking up or something like sure. he is he is a dad jokey mellow coach i think the approach my approach was he's the fifth wilson brother mm. uh you know but i didn't get that much time to play in those other movies i got a ton of time to improv and play um but this was she wrote it funny she wrote it the jokes that are in there i think there's maybe two or three that I guess I threw in, but for the most part, it was pretty structured and she wrote a great script that allowed me to interpret it in a funny way. Yeah, absolutely. So when you, um, and then, so like your interpretation, when you get the script, you get the part or whatever, uh, and you're reading a script, a lot of times, you know, I've never really read a professional uh, script. So is it, does it read funny? Does it read like 
he's kind of comic relief or is there notes? It's interesting. It's the same way, like as uh, you people, different people interpret a movie when they watch it. Right. Sure. I will. I look at it through a funny lens. That's just just the way that I am. Mm-hmm. Um, and also knowing when I'm reading it that I'm possibly going to be playing this character, so I'm I'm sort of I don't know. I just put myself in it, and I just mm-hmm. can't help but my voice on the words sounds not not like I'm Jim Carrey or anything. Right, I'm not claiming to be, you know, mm-hmm. uh, dice. I'm not that funny, but I just I, I look at things through a humorous lens with my voice. So yeah, it read that for me. Yeah, um, but people interpret things differently. So you know, uh, this script in particular, I had to have it explained to me like mm-hmm. the tone, yeah, a bit, you know, because I didn't pick up on it right away, and then I, then rereading was like, oh. I get it, you know, and it's the yeah. same when you watch a movie and then rewatch it. It's like, mm-hmm. oh, yeah, yeah. You pick up the, you know, the small subtleties or or something that you didn't see it around the first time, which is, oh, it's awesome. Uh, as as an actor, so you've been in, you know, a lot of a lot of work. Uh, how, how, what's your take on spoilers? Because you know, now the next movie I want to see is is the Spider Man movie. I'm a big uh, yeah. Spider Man movie, and I'm. But you want to see the novice, dude? I want to see the novice too. It, that's coming. It's. I'll have to I'll have to get that one on demand, but I do want to watch that. It looks awesome. Um, but the one that I'm going to bring my kid to is, yeah, 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 is Spider Man, and there's going to be like so many spoilers. Uh, have you ever encountered as an actor like people dropping spoilers on on some flicks, or, or like how do, I guess how do you feel about it? Of my flicks, yeah, or in general, I think spoilers in general. I think that like it is so hard to make a movie. Mm-hmm. It is so hard. Uh, you know, this Marvel train is a rolling. So, you know, it seems like they're just churning them out, but there's so many moving parts of so many Mm -hmm. people that really try to make this thing special. And I think spoilers are really, really shitty. Yeah. Like, you know, and, and, and in any, like this movie, the novice, I I, I think it was like uh, maybe, one two percent of the budget of spider-man probably yeah yeah maybe, for sure. maybe five percent uh took about 10 years to or five years from you know pen to paper um and a pure hustle and people almost dying in, in the water mm-hmm. and people freezing to death and um you know carbon monoxide poisoning almost happened Jeez. um a, a an extra uh, a space heater because we were filming in Ontario in November exploded and fell on an extra. Oh, wow. You know? Oh yeah. So then <laughs> you put this thing together and some a-hole decides to either rip it or yeah. spoil it or, and then, and then, and you think that the people that do that love movies, you know, mm-hmm. but then when you do that, you take away from people's ability to make movies because then they don't make money on it. Right. So I think I, this is an old story, obviously, but, as far as spoilers too, if you're stopping, if you're doing something to stop anybody from seeing the movie, the movie making money, I feel like you're like hurting yourself. That's what yeah, mean. absolutely, I would agree with that. And then like, not to be too preachy. I mean, that's, oh no, you know. you're you're absolutely right. And that's uh, you know, um, same thing with like music. I'm a, I'm a big uh, uh, music guy. I love I love movies. I love music, and I'm always gonna go to the theaters, buy the movies, or get them on you know on demand or whatever, rather than illegally download them because yeah, because of of things like that. It's like, I want more of the good stuff. And if you're taking it away from those people, they're not going to be making it. Yeah. So, they can't, you know, as far as I would say this, if you're a music guy, mm-hmm. I, I, listen, I, I, uh, I'm a, whatever the novice score yeah. and soundtrack is epic. Awesome. Like the, the music in the trailer, mm-hmm. they got this guy, Alex Weston to come in and score it. Like that, that violin, that crazy violin in the trailer. Yeah. That's just like a snippet of it. Yeah, I, I mean, I he came in and just like gave the movie steroids. It's like it, it's so good, it's crazy. Yeah, yeah, and it's it's insane. You, I've watched uh, just stuff on like like oh this scene without music or something like that, and you've seen it on yeah, yeah, you know yeah. YouTube or whatever, and it's just like such a dramatic change in uh, the overall vibe of a, of a, of a film. So it's, yeah, it's pretty cool. The score is definitely important. Uh, as far mm. as, as far as trailers go. So there's a couple trailers for this. 
how do you feel about you know what's in a trailer and what's not how do you have you ever well first of all do you write anything have you ever written a, a script before in which yeah. uh, and then you have to decide i gotta make this trailer how am i gonna do that uh is that kind of like a a mini directorial as well well i think like from what i understand i have a lot of friends who are producers and the trailer is a massive deal right yeah. obviously that's like uh for an actor that's your resume your headshot your real you know for mm -hmm. anybody uh so, so the trailer's a i never cut a trailer i've never actually got one of my scripts made okay um but i've been a part of behind the scenes being close with people that have made movies that i've been in um the trailer's everything mm -hmm. you know um and i've been in movies where i'm barely at the trailer and and it hurts as yeah. an actor take it my so being so much in the novice trailer, to be honest with you, and there's two of them. Uh, it's a big win. Yeah, absolutely. I was so happy, man, because I could have easily not been in the trailer, and you know, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, yeah. It's it's interesting. I don't think a lot of people don't think about that too. Just like the the importance and impact a trailer has, because ultimately that's that's your first impression of the film. Like, and it's yeah. if this looks, you know, I've, there's been plenty of times where I. I see a trailer and I'm like, I feel like I just watched the whole movie and it mm. kind of steers me away from seeing it rather than, oh, they showed me a snippet, but, uh, and now I want more. I'm going to go see it. So I feel like, I feel like the trailer for this movie definitely does that. It, they cut an epic trailer. Yeah. I think IFC, well, IFC bought the movie and cut a trailer. And that's sort of the other thing of like, they don't know me. They weren't on the movie. So they're mm -hmm. making things from the movie yeah. uh, to, the, to put in. I do think in, they're sort of pushing that narrative a little bit. Like there's something with this coach. And, and, yeah. <laughs> Is that what you thought when you watched it? Kind of. Yeah. Yeah. And then uh, I also just got like some, you know, I definitely got the, the obsession part of it. Yeah. Like I, I could, they really so did a good job doing that. And um, I was just like, yeah, this is a, this is pretty cool. And it looks, it looks like a really good, good movie. Yeah. So. I actually made this movie with, uh, it's kind of a cool story. Another full circle moment, like the one where I went out with my buddy. Um, so I, I came back to Canada and I took that break and um, I just called my agents and said, okay, I'm ready to start up again. And then they sent me this script and they say, look, this is your first, you know, here's this movie is happening um, near you, uh, make a tape for it you know mm -hmm. send it to the, the people on the same day one of my best friends carrie holland who's one of the producers of this movie called me um are you back are you are you active again because like i think i might have this movie and i, I think there's a great part in it for you will you make a tape um which is kind of crazy just just you know mm -hmm. the uh and ultimately lauren had you know final final choice but you know, this being the thing that that was ready, readily available as I came back, happened to be my friend's first sh kick at the can. Yeah. Um, and she'd been trying forever. I mean, she's a successful producer in other ways, but uh, and then it with us doing it and having COVID hit and now experiencing it in this way together yeah. that, you know, that it's getting these reviews and awards. I mean, it's just it's amazing. Yeah, that's awesome. That's I mean meant to be again you know it's nice, it was, it was right? destiny. Like it's a nice thing yeah yeah, yeah absolutely um so um with the podcast you know i we talked about it a little bit i every once in a while we'll we'll drink some craft beer are you are you a beer drinker at all i am beer what's yeah. a, what's what's kind of your you know I, does canada have like a big craft beer scene i would imagine they do yeah oh yeah 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 what um are, so i'm not a big like I'll drink it if it's there kind sure. of thing. And I definitely like my, I like that sour. Oh yeah. Sours are good. I like sours. I also got into, um, I was dating a girl at one point who was really into Hefefeis. Okay. Yeah. Like a German beer. Yep. Yeah. And I, I sort of like that, but I, I, I like it all. I'm, I, I, what do you like? I, if, uh, you know, it kind of all depends if it's, uh, if I'm watching sports and I'm looking, you know, it's like a, a Pilsner, a light ale kind of thing. Yeah. Otherwise IPAs, but you can only have so many of those because they're so high in alcohol content. You just like one, you get super bloated and then you get drunk really quick. 
I had the grossest IPA the other night, actually. There are some nasty ones. You're... <laughs> oh, man. It was after the, the, the screening of this movie. Mm-hmm. We went out and um, I had a cider for the first time. I'd never drank that okay. before. Uh, it was all right. Give me a little buzz. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then this IPA. And uh, this was like a big crew guy. Like, and and they think we're pussies like the actors. <laughs> but yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah we need to have them. And it I couldn't drink it. Mm-hmm. Like, it tastes like Buckley's cough medicine. Or yeah. Something. Like it was like he's just chugging it. Oh, gee. I'm trying to drink this thing. And it was man, bitter. Like yeah, it so is. bitter and like thick. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I like, mm. I mean, I like, I do like IPAs a lot, but some of them I've had some pretty nasty ones. And I, I think usually like them. Yeah. One time I, I was at a, a brewery in Madison. It was another big city in Wisconsin. Yeah. And uh, I'm pretty sure I was talking to the guy that made it. And he's like, looking at me, he's, the big smile on his face. He's like, what do you think? And I'm just like, it's not for me. <laughs> it's not for me. And I had to get something else. But the, 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 your listeners are going to be like, this actor came on his show. He's such a pussy. He's like <laughs> talking about an IPA like it's gasoline. Nah. I promise you I like IPAs. This thing is, this thing was whack. Man. It was we've, we've had some bad ones. And uh, I mean, uh, we have an episode coming up uh, for Christmas that uh, we have. It's the second time we've had a pickle sour. So it's like a, oh. a beer brewed with dill yeah. pickles and it's, uh, it's disgusting. But uh, it's gross. It's it's OK. I mean, I can drink it. It sounds good. I love dill pickle. Like, yeah. Sort of, you know. If you're like eating like potato chips with it. Yeah, I think it would be a good. But just just drinking it. Uh, it's just like drinking pickle juice, honestly. But uh, we get some weird stuff. And Wisconsin's a big beer um state and yeah i think we're always beer and like cheese right beer and cheese packers beer and Bucks. cheese and Stephen avery yeah oh yeah that guy <laughs> yeah he's uh that was a big deal then that you know that's not too far away from where i live where really where live. do you live i've i dude i'm i'm obsessed with that i've seen it twice that series yeah we i live in a in a city called fond du lac so it's uh in french i think it means like the bottom of the lake um yeah. but it's uh we're like fond du lac yeah, yeah. we're we're it's kind of a sweet spot because we're like 45 minutes to an hour away from all the major cities. So green Bay, Milwaukee and Madison oh, cool. are all just pretty much around the block. Uh, so it's, yeah, it's nice. You know, I, I love Wisconsin. It's a, it's a great state. So then you're close to Manitowoc. We're pretty County. close to Manitowoc. Yeah. It's probably, probably maybe like a little over an hour. Um, yeah. and then we have the prison in Wapan, which is, from here like a, a 15 minute drive and that's where yeah. i think brandon gassy gassy is there or was there um yeah and it's weird because the prison is just in the middle of the town there's houses across the street so there's yeah. people that just look out their front window and there's this giant ass prison it's and there's another documentary on netflix um there's that guy in colorado that killed his wife and his two kids Oh, I saw that one. Yeah, the American neighbor next door. Yeah, like, yeah, which is uh, a crazy documentary. But uh, he's in yeah. he's in Wapan, so it's just like oh wow, it's weird like being in so close to all these stories that people are talking about because you're like oh yeah I know that place and that do place. You think he did it? Do you think Stephen Avery did it? Yeah, probably. I mean, really? <laughs> I, I uh, it's weird because a friend of mine, her mom was part of the legal team briefly for that. And she was getting like crazy messages. I'll interview you, man. <laughs> she got like crazy messages on Facebook from people who just watched it. And she's like, yo, like I have nothing to do with that. And, you know, my mom was briefly on the legal team. And now you're like, she was getting like threats and shit like that. And it's just like intense. So I, I was kind of um, turned off by it. Um, yeah, yeah. I understand it's a, it's, it is an, in infa- fact, a, a really impactful documentary. Like it's a, it was made like amazingly made and it's so awesome. emotional. Like you get so emotionally, but they are manipulating because they are, it is mm. pretty one sided. Yeah. Um, yeah. I don't know. It's, you know, I, I don't, I, my biggest thing is it just, they looked so shady. The, the prosecutor, like mm-hmm. uh, Ken Kratz, that guy. Mm-hmm. Um, and it turned out it all just worked. So then that guy, like, it seemed like they were planting stuff. Yeah. Even though they may, they might have just done it because they were they were pretty sure he was guilty. They just wanted to make sure they got a conviction. Right. But they definitely did that stuff. Oh yeah. And then that guy was so shady, and then he got a rep. He got he lost his job afterwards mm-hmm. before the second season. So then it's just like, yeah. yeah I dude. just I I I definitely think 
I, I, I don't question that uh, there's legal people, you know, people in the police force and stuff that are uh, incapable of planting things. So, and, you know, I, I definitely, I see it from both sides and I just, uh, I, I'll take it for what it is, you know, in the, in the yeah, documentary, yeah, yeah. we'll never know the truth, unfortunately, but no. uh, yeah, no. it's, it's crazy. Uh, Sorry, we, dude, I really went down that road. No, it's all good. I mean, Wisconsin has, uh, we had Ed Gein and we had Jeffrey Dahmer, you know, so it's like, we're, we're not a, a, a stranger to a weird shit. And I happening. went to Wisconsin and I met the nicest people I've met in the U.S. because I've lived all over the U.S. Yeah. I loved Milwaukee. Yeah, Milwaukee's awesome. It's got such uh, such a good culture and such a, a, just a fun environment, really. Um, mm-hmm. One day I'd like to make it to to Canada. I know you said like Vancouver. They, I think they have some good music festivals up there and something got... Yeah, uh, Montreal, Toronto's got crazy music. Yeah, my favorite uh, interviewer is from uh, BC, Vancouver, uh, Nardwar. Nardwar, oh, yeah, 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 he's, yeah, yeah. he's the man. I, yeah. He does such yeah. a cool job. But uh, yeah, that's awesome, man. Well, uh, I appreciate you coming on the show. And uh, anything else you want to say? How can how can people watch uh, The Novice? Where can they follow you on social media? Uh, yeah, follow me. Uh, it's um, My handle is at Jonathan Cherry. Okay um on instagram so it's just y-o-n-a-t-h-a-n cherry um I, really, I got my goon picture up there nice uh but um to see the novice uh it's everywhere it's like any apple prime anywhere where you can stream it's mm-hmm. there but it's definitely in theaters in a lot of cities right now yeah um so Hopefully it's, you know, near you or, uh, I would imagine it but is, yeah, yeah, it's, it's, but I would say if you watch it, watch it loud nice. and listen. Yeah, absolutely, man. I want to, like I, my parents went to go see it and I was like, they better pay attention <laughs> or else they're going to call me. And I didn't get it. Well, <laughs> you probably didn't listen. Yeah. Parents do that sometimes, you know, it's, <laughs> that's awesome, man. Well, thanks for, yeah. uh, for, for hanging out. I really appreciate it. And, uh, best uh, of luck. Hey, with great, that. man. Thanks for having me on. Nice meeting you. Yeah. Nice meeting you.